Hello guys and welcome to episode 2 of my Wolverhampton Wanderers FIFA 19 career mode and today's episode is going to be a bit different, we're going to be doing a post commentary career mode and we're going to try and uh, get through loads of transfer business and two games of the Premier League season against Everton and uh, Leicester City so two huge games to start off the season but as you can see on the screen we are looking at getting Renato Sanchez and we have two um, midfield options either Renato Sanchez or Fernandez, uh, but then later on the see, uh, later on in the episode I do decide on getting both of them. So uh, Fernandez is the player I do uh, kind of go for first because he is the cheaper option. 8.7 million as a bargain for a player of such good quality. And um, we do of course go and negotiate his wage and he doesn't have too bad of wages. I think it's yeah, 15,000 a week, not too bad. And it's not gonna hurt our uh, finances too much as you can see. Uh, they are going to ex no, he's going to reject that, and then we're going to accept it. So, uh, six point five thousand per week for a bar uh, for a player of his quality is a bargain. And then, of course, the next player to go for is Martinez, eighty-one rated striker, someone who I think we need up front. And uh, nothing wrong with Jimenez, I just think we need that kind of class up front um, that we're kind of lacking. And yeah, so two signings I think we've done so far: Fernandez and Martinez. Uh, we do of course sign four players in this episode martinez fernandez renato sanchez and cabral we kind of fail at cabral because of wages he won't accept fifteen thousand a week he thinks insulting so we do of course go for him uh later on in the episode but we do go for ambabu oh yeah actually we do sign five players so uh we did a good bit of wheeling and dealing uh to ensure that we get them at the cheapest uh price and ambabu 12.3 million plus i offer it's a pretty good deal for him and pretty good wage as well, not too bad. Um, around thirty-five thousand a week, and he was happy with that. Not quite what we're looking for, and that's the kind of response that we do want to get from him, because it shows that we are overpaying or we're not underpaying for a player of uh, his quality. And there we are, Renato Sanchez has signed for us. And a week later, we do go into for Cabral, and we deal, uh, do do uh, get this deal over the line. <laughs> Eventually, uh, we kind of failed first time with his wages. And we do not want to make the same mistake, but they do, of course, negotiate the wages uh, themselves because they want this deal to go through. So uh, he turned out to be 35000 per week on wages. A little bit expensive for a player of his uh, age, but I'm sure it will pay off in the future. And he probably will look for a bit of a wage increase. But uh, $9 million we do go. I know they have to, oh, yeah, to come back within a week, but yeah. Um, we do, of course, negotiate this again. I think we got him for like $9.5 million. I can't remember. Uh, actually, I think it's nine. Yeah, nine million. And uh, we do go in and get his contract successfully tied down on a five-year deal. I think it was. And yeah, I'm very excited to play with Cabral because he looks to be the real deal. I kind of was contemplating over him or Sancho, but I felt he was actually the better option, even though he was low rated and a bit younger. But um, kind of annoys me the way he doesn't have a face. But anyway, we'll get over that. And twenty-five thousand a week, I think. We get them down to a little bit of, uh, of a decrease, down to 22,000. So um, there, it's not really breaking the bank um, for a player who is probably going to be amazing in the future. But yeah, there we are. We get Carbell signed and we do kick on to our first game of the season against Everton. As you see, all the new boys are playing except for Renato Sanchez and Carbell. So pretty good team we do have fielded against Everton. But... We'll wait and see if we can handle Everton. Uh, it doesn't turn out to be a great match, uh, I will say. As you see, 16 minutes uh, have gone on the clock, and they do attack us poor defending from me. I don't know what I'm doing. As you see, they are going to punish us. Great attacking um, presence there from Everton. As you see, they do take the lead, and I was very frustrated because I thought we did kind of have to upper hand them in the first 15 minutes, but they do punish us, and they were all over us for the uh, for the rest of the game, and. Uh, not much more highlights in the first half um, in this game but yeah uh, it does finish 2-0 uh, we'll see the second goal now in a quick second and we couldn't have done anything more than that to be honest like it was it was a very hard game they had 22 shots on us and uh, we just couldn't cope with them and we were lucky to actually only concede um, two because it could have easily turned out to be three maybe four goals as you can see 62 minutes gone i think this is where the goal does come about uh whipped in ball and yeah there we are and juicy gay 
to take the shot and he does score in the bottom corner. Great finish from Juice again again. I can't um, mock him for that, but yeah, poor defender for me again. And they do punish us. And they go 2 0 up. And I think at that stage they had like 15 shots on target, which was mad. And yeah, so you can see 89 minute we do give away a penalty, but um, I don't concede the penalty. It was actually a pretty good uh, save from. Um, Rupertisio, I kind of looked at his eyes and I could see he was going down the right hand side and I did uh, end up saving the penalty. You can see Sigerson does step up to the spot and he does fail to score. Pretty poor penalty I must say. Uh, a little bit down the middle as you can see they almost score on the rebound but that is how the match will end. 2-0, pretty pretty poor um, game from us I must say. Uh, I think we should have done a lot better than that. Maybe we should have got a goal but First game over and done with as uh, Wolves manager. We do kick on to the Leicester City game. No changes at all for this game. And I did make a couple of changes uh, come the second half. Uh, I kind of changed up the tactics a little bit, trying to test out something with this Wolves side because I haven't played with them too much. But so, pretty boring first half. And not much did happen. And that is how the first half will end nil all. And I did change the tactics here, I kind of changed, I was kind of messing with the formations but I decided to stick with the 4-3-3 um, holding because I think I don't want to push them too much, people up front and then were kind of left exposed at the back but yeah, changed up the defensive and offensive, went with fast build up for uh, offensive, went back to balance for defensive because I thought that uh, by dropping back I was a bit, I didn't have much attacking uh, presence up front so yeah we did stick with the same formation but yeah that's all that really happened but until the 82nd minute great cross in here for Jimenez and a brilliant finish from uh, from Cav I can't remember who it was um, I was seeing anyone who it was I can't remember who scored this goal uh, oh yeah it was uh, Fernandez. so great finish from him in the top corner and yeah it was going all good um, up until then I was happy got the first goal of the game we were winning Maybe we could hold on to the win. Maybe, just maybe we could hold on to the win. Until. 92 minutes gone. Leicester have the possession. Not the best cross. Couldn't deal with it. And yeah. They go and score. Last second of the game. Last kick of the game. And they go and score. And I was not happy. But I just... I just couldn't do anything about it. That was a great finish there from Jamie Vardy. And unfortunately, we do only come away with uh, one point in the game. And of course, it does end one all. But a great finish from Vardy. I must not lie, but pretty poor defending for me again. Definitely defending I need to work on. But yeah, uh, I tried to get a quick attack here, but unfortunately, the ref had seen enough. And that was the full-time whistle. One all, disappointing, but a tough... Uh, game against Leicester away and uh, it doesn't get any easier than this and I think the next game is against Man City away or it could be at home I can't remember but we are playing Man City in the next game and that would be a tough game again if we can come away with a point I'll be happy one point from a possible six not the best start but we are new to this um, new to this league so it will take time but I have believed that we can get into the Europa League spots by the end of the season once we do kind of click with the squad, I'm kind of like working on what way to kind of like play the team. And I felt the second half tactics were uh, the best way. And we kind of uh, got more attacks. I uh, got more opportunities on uh, goal. But yeah, you see transfer offer for Doherty. I decided to reject it. Don't want to be selling him. He's my backup uh, right back. And we will be keeping him until possibly the end of the season. Then we might let him go on. Uh, if we do make the Europa League, if we don't, then I might keep him because... He's probably good uh, backup for a team that's not in the Europa League. But you can see, uh, yeah, that's where I am going to leave today's episode. I hope you did enjoy. If so, smash that like button. If you like post comment, hit that like button. And I'll see you in the next episode very soon.